the Stanley Cup charms is going to be in the building tonight in is Las it, Vegas. Is it done? Is it over? I think it's is done. It? I think oh. it's over too. Yeah, yeah. I've it's been on the Vegas train for, for a while now. It seems so long since the Leafs crashed out. You had to Doesn't do that, it? right? Yeah. I know. We do this every show. What do we I do? Know. We were talking about how we like... were happy when they when they won the first <laughs> round and then how sad we were. Those idiots, but it, it just seems that it just feels like it was a different season ago, which it kind of was. It does. It feels like it was ages right. ago. And it's now, yeah, the, season, the Panthers yeah. are on the brink of getting eliminated in Vegas. Uh, expansion team, sixth season. Looks like they're going to win a Stanley Cup. Who is it? Bill Foley. He called it, though, too. He said six seasons in, we're going to win a cup. I don't know what crystal ball he was looking into. Maybe Chris Meany knows, our next guest of uh, <laughs> FTN Network. Chris Meany, is it done tonight? Can Vegas close it out against Florida? I think so. I mean, I'd love to see another game. We can maybe potentially break down game six, but I've been with you, Albert, drinking this Vegas Kool-Aid. <laughs> and how cool would it be to see you know a Stanley Cup parade on the strip in Las Vegas and yeah, I mean, six years in the in the league and their second Stanley Cup final. They've been to, you know, the Western Conference finals a, a handful of times as well. It's just they're such a deep team and up and down, you know, their lineup. You, you talk a, a lot in the playoffs about bottom six, like the bot. You, you got to have other guys chipping in offensively. It can't just be your superstars. You know, you guys brought up the Leafs top six. Like, what's the bottom six doing? And I think that's been the biggest difference here yeah. is there's been really no line matching at all between Paul Maurice and Bruce Cassidy. Cassidy is just rolling all six, uh, all four lines. He started game one, game two, game three, and game four with his fourth line. Like, he has been starting these Stanley Cup games with his fourth line. What other teams? I can't even think of other teams that have went down that road. Like, I think about the Red Wings, you know, 20 years ago, rolling all four lines. Like, it's just, it's kind of unheard of. And he's got a, you know, two skilled players on the first three lines with a, an agitator, a grinder, an in your face type player. Barbashev's been fantastic with Eichel and Marcia. So I do think it's over. You know, Florida's coming in shorthanded. We're unsure of the status of Matthew Kachuk. Is he going to suit up tonight? You know, Anthony Clare is questionable. Random on tour. Alexander Barkov, these guys are playing through something. I know a lot of players, Albert, at this time of the year are playing through something. Yeah. Well, Matthew Kachuk is missing 17, 18 minutes, th sitting on the on the bench for a majority of the third period. You know that he is really dealing with something significant, and he is questionable to suit up tonight. I'd imagine he does, but he's not going to be full go. He's played the, the fewest minutes he has in this round compared to the first three rounds. And, Vegas is just so deep. All six defenders are six foot. They're blocking everything. So this is a team that is clicking right now, and they're going to come out firing. Uh, the crowd is going to be amped. I I'd say this is over tonight, just like it was over for the other Southern Mar Miami team last night. Oh, in the Miami brutal game. <laughs> for South Florida right now. No I mean, kidding. I know yeah. both your teams get there, but – you know, to lose in the back-to-back yeah. -back days? Oh, Yeah, not not great. I mean, listen, one, one of the cliches, Chris, in, in hockey in particular is it's a copycat league. Looking at the way Vegas is built, I mean, does that show you the way do you think the NHL might look like in years moving forward? Will, will teams look at the way they've been built and say, yeah, that is the way to do this? I think so. And it's also maybe a little bit unfair, too. We've seen teams be over the cap in the regular season. I don't want to make any excuses, but when Tampa won the cap, won the cup a few years ago <laughs> and Nikita Kucherov didn't play the entire regular season, he was on long term IR and then they activated him and away they go like they're, they're over the cap as well. Vegas has done some things over the past couple of years where they've been super aggressive for one, like they've gone all in, like they got some help through the expansion draft, for example, Florida. Jonathan Marcheseau and Riley Smith are two former Florida Panthers. And at the time of the expansion draft, you know, Florida was saying, you can take Jonathan Marcheseau, we'll make him available. We'll also give you a fourth round pick if you take Riley Smith. And you could see the expansion draft a couple of years ago with Seattle. Teams learned a thing or two from, from that. But, you know, I guess I do like, you know, GMs being aggressive. They've traded a lot of their picks, a lot of their prospects away, like, you know, Nick Suzuki for Patretti, that didn't work, but they were aggressive getting Mark Stone. They were aggressive getting Jack Eichel. They were aggressive through free agency getting Alexander Patrangelo. So there's a lot of guys on their team that have won Stanley Cups and they have that, you know, superstar pedigree. But I think, you know, to your question, James, I think maybe coaches could take something away from this and having like, again, not all like their eggs in one basket sort of deal like Barbershev. You know, you'd view him as a third, fourth liner up on that first line. Brett Howden. Brett Howden's been had some real nice moments here in the playoffs. Maybe a fourth liner on most teams, but playing with Mark Stone and Chandler Stevenson, Riley Smith and William Carlson having a, a grinder on the line as well. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say it could be a copycat league and a lot of teams maybe being aggressive to try to get their players that they feel good about, but also 
let's be honest with the situation that the Golden Knights are in because of the salary cap and not being non-existent at this time in the playoffs. But I don't want to take anything away from them because they're down to like their fourth and fifth string goalie here, and they're still finding ways to win hockey games with Aiden Hill. Yeah, we're speaking to Chris Meany of the F10 Network, and you also have to talk about you know Aiden Hill, right? I mean, this is not their first choice goalie, and uh, he's standing on his head. He's playing like a $10 million guy like Bob Roski was earlier on in the season. Uh, Paul Maurice said in his pregame today, Teams down 3-1 can play with a lot more freedom uh, mentally. Are you buying what most selling here? Because I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you have to say something. Uh, you can play freely, I suppose. It's kind of like just the uh, – James brought up cliches. Like, it's just, you know, backs against the wall, leave it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the tank has got to be empty, like all those sort of things. I think Florida can take certainly take something away from, you know, beating the best team that we've ever seen in the regular season in the Boston Bruins being down three games to one that, you know, and when they went into Boston, you know, it was game five, they were down, they went to Burboski, their backup and everything changed. So they do have that going for them that they've been in this situation on the road, but I just feel like they're, they're so shorthanded here today with, with Matthew Kachuk being limited and Duclair, as I mentioned earlier, a couple a couple of their players, Montour has been so great here in the playoffs, but he's clearly not a hundred percent at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, I don't fully buy into that, but they do have something that they can take away from earlier experiences and nobody's really thinking that they're going to win. So yeah. it's hard to say that Vegas has all this pressure, but Burboski going to have to be lights out tonight. Uh, he's going to have to have like one of his best performances and he's had several, uh, but Aiden Hill has been able to match him so far. Yeah, you mentioned Kachuk and Montour. Good as too. They all missed practice yeah. on, on Monday or questionable for, for tonight. Um, listen, they, they play a certain style. We know what it is. It's fun to watch. It's aggressive. It's physical. But are we now seeing that perhaps it isn't quite as sustainable as perhaps you may have thought earlier in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think that's another good question. And I know some people on the outside are, are thinking, what, like, why is Florida? I went to a uh, this. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten into this, but I had a golf tournament over the weekend and somebody asked me if the NHL was rigged because <laughs> Florida is getting all these penalties that they didn't get in the first couple of rounds. Like they were physical with the Bruins, with the Leafs and with the Hurricanes, and they didn't make, you know, five or six trips to the penalty box. But really one of the biggest differences in this series has been the special teams mm -hmm. and Vegas, you know, six power play goals and, and Florida struggling to find the back of the net on the power play and, and taking careless, undisciplined penalties. Some of it, have, some of the calls have been a little questionable for sure, but what I just, I view Vegas as just a ton of experience. I, I see, I seen a Florida team that wanted to push around Carolina, push Toronto around and they tried that with Vegas and they're just sitting there laughing at them. You know, after the whistle, a, a, a face wash or, you know, we saw Matthew Kuchuk. He's got three 10 minute misconduct so far in the Stanley Cup finals. Like Vegas is just not falling into that trap. Some of it is, you know, the experience. Alec Martinez is on the blue line with two cups. Petrangelo has a cup. You know, a lot of players like those misfits like Theodore and Petra, uh, Theodore and William Carlson and Riley Smith and Marcia. So these guys were on the team in year one, went to the Stanley Cup finals. So they do. They have a lot of experience up and down their lineup where you look at Florida there's a lot of guys that just haven't been here before. Yeah. You know, Matthew Kachuk has had a taste of, you know, the battle of Alberta and that physical, you know, matchup that that brought. But ultimately, you know, Florida has been a little bit, I think, overzealous. Like they've just been really careless and it's, it's kind of bit them. Yeah. I mean, on the power play, you were talking about it, but 0 for 13 on the power play in the Stanley Cup finals, not good enough. Uh, let's talk Con Smythe. I mean, we talked about this the last time you were on here. Uh, look at Johnny Marsh's show, minus 625, 13 goals, 24 points, nine game point streak. Imagine how the Panthers feel right now. This is the guy that didn't protect in the expansion draft. He goes over to Vegas and he's making them pay. Do you see any other player outside of him potentially winning the Con Smythe tonight if they win the, the game, obviously? I, I don't. And, a little bit of a hum humble brag, 30, 31 to one. We have oh. over at FTM bets after the second round for Jonathan Marsh. So, so I'm pretty happy to hear you, you bring up nice. those odds. He leads the playoffs in five and five points as well. He was the best player in the second round against the Oilers. He was the best player in the third round against Dallas. He led the series in goals and points. He leads the series in goals here. He's got four goals. Uh, there's a handful of players that got two. He leads the series in points with seven, you know, I was starting to think Aiden Hill could be that next up. I know he's got the second shortest odds, I think at nine to one. Yeah. Just because he one, he had been great. And I thought if he could get a couple another shutouts in the Stanley cup finals, that maybe he can garner some attention and certainly, you know, get the best of Bobrovsky. But what we've seen now for Marcia. So since the, the beginning of the Oilers series, I think maybe you can make a case for Eichel, but you know, it's, 
it's like they say, you know, chicks dig the long ball. I mean, people love goal scores. Jack yeah, Eichel's, man. he's got all these assists. He's got 11 primary assists. He leads the playoffs in apples, but you know, it's Marcia. So who's finishing all those goals. So it, it will be a really fun story for him, you know, potentially winning con might maybe getting that Stanley cup first from Mark stone being there from day one and being a former Florida Panther as well. I think it's his award to lose unless the series does go seven and Florida wins, then it would be Burlowski. But I, I believe it's Marcia. So tonight. Yeah. I see Eichel here at uh, 25 to one, like you mentioned, 23 points, five apples in the Stanley cup finals. Okay. Let's talk about tonight's game. Um, what's your angle here? How are you betting this thing? I got a couple props I like. I mean, okay. Vegas is pretty juiced at minus 185. Uh, you can consider them on the puck line. I do believe that they'll win this game by a couple goals. You know, if it's a if it's if it's a 3-2 game or a 3-1 game, you could see Florida be super aggressive in pulling their goalie, and maybe we right. get to that over five and a half. But I got a couple props I like. Chandler Stevenson at uh, over one and a half shots at minus 130. I think that's over at DraftKings. We had him for game four at over one and a half at minus 115. He has at least three shots in three straight games. Barkoff, I think, is going to be super aggressive. He had 10 shot attempts in game four, which led all skaters. And I feel like he's going to get double shifted, especially if they're down and we don't see Kachuk at full health or Duclair and some of their other skaters. He's at minus 136 for over two and a half shots. And because you mentioned Eichel, with the assists, he's at minus 108 here for an assist tonight. And he's just been playing really good hockey, a good 200-foot hockey uh, this season, which is something that Eichel's, you know, he hasn't really shown us that he could do that before these playoffs, but Bruce Cassidy has him playing. So those are the three guys that I like quite a bit. Nice. I love it. I have to write these down because you know I'm going to be tailing. Anytime Chris Meany is handing out bets, <laughs> you got to tail him. Chris Meany, FTN you. Network. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, have a good rest of the show and enjoy the game tonight. You too, thanks, buddy. Mate. Thank you so much. Uh, I just said you too, rest of the show. He's not even going to be on the show. It's one of those <laughs> where like a waiter comes over to you, happy birthday. Oh, you too. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> have what you a, done that before? Thing, I have, yeah. Have I do so many stupid things, man.